Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be doing some quick little love notes from your person. This is going to be a message cards only reading and there are three groups to choose from. Group one is the cherry quartz. Group two is the rose quartz. And group three is the clear quartz. So if you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing, and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups, or perhaps all of the groups that you're most drawn to. I'll give you a minute to make your selection and then we'll get right into it. And there are timestamps in the description box of the video for each group if you'd like to jump ahead, which I do recommend using so that you can skip over me shuffling cards in between groups to clear the energy of the group I've just read for and tap into the energy of the group I'm about to read for. So again, I'll give you a minute. Please use the timestamps and we'll get into your reading. Hi group one, you chose the cherry quartz. So I'm gonna be getting three cards from three different decks and let's see what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self. Okay, and they say, I keep comparing you to others. So this person cannot get you off of their mind if they have attempted to move in the direction of other connections, maybe looking to replicate or experience again what they have touched on with you in the past. They have been largely unsuccessful in that. Um, it almost feels that the feelings that they have for you are being carried with them into other romantic situations as perhaps a third party wedge or block energy that is really keeping them from showing up fully in these other um, attempts at connection in these other partnerships. It may be very complicated. This person could seem very distracted, um, very disillusioned. There could be a lot of strain and, and stress and pressure that is going on right now as they're really being pulled in two different directions, trying to focus on kind of what is at hand, what is right in front of them, um, a direction that they had chosen to move in at the expense of investing further or at all in a connection with you. And sort of the further away that they get from that decision point, from that crossroads, it's feeling like more of a kind of the walls are closing in on them sort of energy, um, or it's more and more difficult to kind of maintain a, a mask of illusion. They may be putting a lot of effort into trying to act as if everything's okay, but it feels that there are cracks that are starting to really show in that veneer, in that facade. Um, other people are noticing this, um, other people that they attempt to partner up with or another partner that they are involved with currently. Um, it's, it's really starting to become very apparent that either the situation is reaching an expiration date or has passed an expiration date, um, that you know these, these two individuals are maybe no longer compatible or perhaps never were. If this is a connection where this person had moved toward that, maybe in the interest of fulfilling some ego-based needs, um, a little bit of codependency involved in that, or any kind of concern or pressure that was coming from their friends and family about the type of partner that they should be with or a specific individual in general. 
They also say, I'm sorry, I couldn't follow through with my promises. So they may have told you that you were the one for them. They only had eyes for you. They wanted to build a future with you, they could see some long-term potential and then um, kind of reneged on these promises, um, backed out, ghosted you, blocked you, cut off communication, um, did a complete shift in, in the direction that they were headed. Um, maybe they were juggling you and a third party and they chose to instead move in the direction of that other person, returning to a previous partner or even just choosing to remain single and keep their options open. And again, it's this energy of regret that that decision, now that they are more kind of deep into that energy, into that energy of choice, a direction in which they had moved, um, they're feeling a lot, of, a lot of regret as if the wrong de decision was made, as if they, they chose to move in the wrong direction or that the person that they have with them by their side at this point in time um, is not the best fit for who they truly are at their core, at their most authentic self and who they are developing into, as well as um, you know, who they see themselves to be or, or kind of want to strive to become in the future. They also say, you've affected my life significantly. So they're still feeling this energetic bond between the both of you. They can't get you out of their mind. You are still very much um, you know, entwined within their heart space. Um, and that they almost felt that it might be easy to walk away from this connection. They're a little bit perplexed why perhaps after so much time, um, there are still these thoughts of you. There's this desire to move back in your direction. There's this contemplation of a decision that was made. And again, feeling that they had made Made the wrong choice. Um, you've awakened them to a new kind of perception of love, a new way of experiencing connection with another person. Uh, you may have even triggered a spiritual awakening or a kundalini awakening within this person that is having profound effects, lasting effects. Um, it feels almost that they are, they have been unable to successfully kind of shrink themselves back down into some kind of box they were living in um, or that they had constructed around themselves that may have even just um, consisted of their worldview of the view of romance and partnerships and kind of who that perfect and ideal partner um, was for them that since touching energetically with you or being in a connection with you, it's been very difficult to kind of conform to that old way, that, o that old idea deal, um, that old standard. They are making efforts, but again, it feels very much like the energy of that, that veneer is starting to crack. They are very distracted. The more time that goes on, the more they are continuing to kind of fixate and focus on, ruminate, or even kind of indulge um, very obviously in this energy of nostalgia, uh, maybe pulling away emotionally from another partner that they are with, or if this is someone who had chosen to just kind of keep their options open, remain single. They may be pulling away from um, dating apps, from really reaching out and meeting new people, choosing instead to kind of move into this internal energy, almost this hermit mode of contact contemplation, looking back over the choices that they've made and, and kind of looking around at the environment that now, um, now exists for them, that they have created and perpetuated for themselves with um, almost this energy of not feeling very fulfilled, um, wanting more, having tasted the potential and the essence of more through the connection with you, um, and finding very much to their dismay that they have been unable to replicate that or experience that in a comparable fashion with other people or in their life in general. They also say our connection is infinite. So again, more confirmation that um, you still occupy a very significant space within their heart. Um, there's still a lot of thoughts about you. Time and distance has not diminished these feelings. It feels that the, the sentiments they have for you have only intensified. They have become more complex. Um, there's a deeper aspect to these things that this person is now starting to really contemplate, really understand. Um, and it almost feels that this time and space apart has been a gift for them to be able to understand and decipher that this is more than just um, a carnal energy. This is more than just physical attraction. There is a spiritual component. There is a soul component to why they feel so drawn to you. It almost defies their, their previous experiences or expectations of the nature of love and partnership. Um, they're feeling this loss. They're feeling very burdened by the decision that they've made to move away from you, um, but also kind of looking around maybe and feeling very much um, caught up in a bramble or in a lot of, um, a lot of difficulties, and they're not um, sure how to really extract themselves from that. 
there's this idea that um, it would be some degree of, of difficulty to move back in your direction, to either extract themselves from a current situation um, or even an energy of needing to come back very humbly um, and, and deliver some kind of an apology, which pride and ego may still be some of that complication, some of that bramble that is keeping them instead um, kind of on the outskirts, continuing in a direction they are moving that does not satisfy them deeply at the soul level. They also say you are the love of my life. So pretty strong words there, especially if this is somebody that um, you just had a very kind of surface level, a very short term connection with. Um, you have in some way, though, expanded their perception of what love is, what love can be, these seeds of potential that they have these these kind of visions and this inclination could have blossomed into so much more. Um, you've infused this person with a sense of vitality as well, a sense of hope um, that now that they are away from you, that there is distance that has been created and sort of perpetuated um, it's it's feeling that it's it's sinking them into this this sort of malaise where they are again forced to go within to introspect um, kind of this hermit mode to take a look around at how they had been really prioritizing love and connections the standards that they had had maybe even the qualifications for who would make that ideal partner all the ways in which they may have um, tried to create excuses that the two of you were too different or too similar to make things work in the long term and a sense of you know regret for having uh, misjudged you, misjudged this connection, or allowing um, such beautiful potential that is still very tangibly felt between you, um, even at a distance, allowing that to slip through their fingers. They also say, you accept me as I am and never try to change me. I wasn't used to that. So they could be very accustomed to conditional love, people who are really only there in the sunny times, um, relationships that are very much ego-based, um, based on appearances or what each person can provide um, or, or really um, kind of encourage or reinforce within the other um, but it feels that largely that may have again been based on kind of mirages on illusions on on this very ego based um, kind of projection and perception of um, who they are entertaining romantically and what they have envisioned for themselves in terms of the ideas of partnership um, long-term futures and there's a sense here again with this idea, it ties in with you've affected my life significantly. You've awakened this person to a new potential, a new way of being, a new way of looking at themselves. Um, love that is without expectation and it just allows and it's something that they are very unaccustomed to. Um, that you have seen kind of these, these flaws and these virtues within this person. You have allowed them the time and space to kind of learn on their own sort of the consequences of the decision of moving in a different direction from you. Um, you've honored that, you've given them their space, you have um, picked up the pieces and moved forward with your life as much as possible. This is something they're very unaccustomed to. They may typically have dealt with um, partners in the past where there was a lot of bitterness, there was a lot of pettiness, a lot of, um, you know, kind of revenge and, um, you know, sort of cutting words and, and, and all kinds of tactics. Um, you know, the jilted lover, the, the scorned lover, the broken heart and kind of how that all manifested, the aftermath of all of that, the experience with you having been very different. It's helping them to see from a new perspective, um, kind of this idea of if you love something let it go and if it returns to you it is yours um, this person is very much turning around in their heart space and their mental space and really honoring and, and recognizing and appreciating um, the ways in which you have allowed them to kind of tread their own path to explore and to discover these lessons and even the ramifications of their choices on their own um, you've taken some of that pressure off if this was kind of a runner chaser situation you've redirected your focus elsewhere perhaps even entertaining other romantic partners um, and it's this energetic distance you sort of taking your power back from this situation that has really um, it feels at this time it's made some kind of an impact it's a ripple effect um, in the silence in the separation this person has been looking within um, and what they are discovering is kind of bittersweet it's this overwhelming sense of 
what can only be described as love that they have for you. They have no other word for it at this point in time. It's the best way of describing it. Um, and there's also this sense of regret at having um, overlooked the potential in this situation or having acted impulsively or in a very ego-based way and choosing to um, kind of squash the connection or move in another direction. They also say the timing still isn't quite right. So this is that idea of kind of that bramble, that tangle that they may still be in. Um, it's not so easy to just pick up the phone and reach out to you. There could be third parties involved. Uh, there can be an apology that is owed, a, a very deep um, and potentially difficult conversation that needs to take place that they are still kind of blocking themselves from or they still need more time to really think this over, to strategize, to plan things, to do things very delicately. Um, a desire to come back to you but to come correctly, to not embroil you further in this idea of juggling or third-party energies, um, certain things that need to be closed out within themselves, maybe cycles or other connections, other situations and relationships, tendencies, life style patterns, behaviors, people they are surrounding themselves with, maybe even what they're doing for a living, how they're structuring their life, um, many different factors that need to really be tied up um, within their own kind of existence. Also some internal sort of shadow work, some inner child healing, a lot of work of self-forgiveness, um, learning to accept you know, the mistakes that were made in the past, the ways in which they had overlooked the potential in this connection or how unfairly they had treated you. Um, and you know, coming to this place of Understanding that the best form of apology is changed behavior, but it takes work within themselves first and foremost to tie up those loose ends, to come to that place of certainty and confidence. Um, so it feels at this point, again, they may, for some of you, just be entering that hermit mode. It may be very um, acute at this point in time. It's a timeless re reading, so whenever you see these messages, take them as they resonate. Um, but when I'm recording this, we're, we're kind of coming right up on the sort of the start of the holiday season. Um, um, here in the United States and so you know this time especially when friends and family are getting together there are gatherings you know it's this it's this sense of um, being with the people that you love the year is wrapping up so a lot of kind of reflection over the the choices that were made, things that were done, things that are still left undone. Um, it's a lot of different kinds of pressure, a mix of, of different sorts of emotions, kind of a bittersweet energy that often saturates this time of year. And it feels that it's very acute for this person. Um, you know, they may be surrounded by people that they love or, you know, kind of gathering with people in, in sort of a, um, a friends or family capacity. And yet there's a sense of something is missing, a sense of almost looking at who they have by their side. Maybe they have nobody by their side and they are feeling very lonely, very isolated, very out in the cold, even within a, the sense, the setting of a gathering, even within a crowded room. Um, so there may be this sense of needing to get through the holidays, um, you know, before kind of making some changes at the beginning of the year, um, or just a need on their part to really sit in this energy, sit in that sense of isolation, even amongst other people, or literally being isolated in order to really sort of sift through these things, pick through that bramble, pick themselves back up out of the energy of self-pity and defeat to work up the courage and the confidence to at least make the effort to at least try and reach out to do something, extend some kind of an olive branch, some kind of change in behavior, some kind of communication. Um, but it fills again with this idea of timing still not being quite right, that this is still a process. It's a work in progress for them. And they also say, I'm learning to love myself. So this can really tie in again with that idea of evaluating the connections they have, the people they're surrounding themselves with, the life they've built for themselves. How have they been settling? How have they been, um, you know, really entertaining outdated connections or maybe doing things because it's what others expect of them. It's the type of partner or specific person that friends or family encourage them to be with. All of these things not acting in accordance with the truth of their own heart and soul. It's a work in progress. The timing is still a factor in this. It's almost baby steps, learning to crawl before they are able to um, run in the direction of the truth of their heart, to be able to explore this untapped potential or to resurrect what had existed between you at one point in time. And they also say, every day I think about contacting you. 
So again, communication is on their mind, um, perhaps very acutely at this point in time. You may be sensing, picking up on this energetically, a lot of reoccurring thoughts about this person, feeling them energetically. Maybe you find yourself, for odd reasons, kind of looking at your phone, anticipating that a call or a message will come through, um, but not being sure where that kind of sense of, of, of sort of anticipation is coming from. And it can very likely stem from kind of this energetic ripple of so much emphasis that this person is putting on, um, kind of looking from the outside of the glass in, um, into that warmth, into that closeness, into that, um, that seed of potential that still exists between the two of you that, you know, may have one, at one time have been a roaring flame and has kind of dwindled down to an ember, but nevertheless exists still within them, this infinite connection this desire to create create change in this circumstance, but feeling at this point in time that it's something they can only look at from afar. They can only contemplate this. They don't feel at a place of readiness um, to act upon these feelings just yet. So I'm going to get some initials for you. This can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, whatever resonates for you. Got you. F, D, O, M, C, T, K, and L. So those are your messages, group one. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer pre-recorded video readings. I've just brought back written readings, and I also offer channeled love letters. Um, turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers and sun catchers if you are interested in checking any of that out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi, group two. You chose the rose quartz. So I'm going to be getting three cards from three different decks. And let's see what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self. Okay, and they say, I need to go my own way for a while. Um, so you may have uh, recently kind of disconnected from um, an energy of pursuit 
in this situation. Maybe you were chasing this person, actively holding space, holding out hope, um, holding your breath, overly fixated on the potential of this person's return or what has been going on with them, um, what they're thinking and feeling, and maybe you've pulled your energy back, you've withdrawn a bit from that, um, you've altered your focus, you've changed directions in some way. This is indicating that that has been energetically felt and perceived by this person. Um, and it feels to be very motivating for them to start to do some of the work um, within themselves in terms of what was triggered in, within them by this connection in the past. Um, now that almost that pressure has been alleviated for them, it has caused them to sort of feel that gap, feel that void and that, that kind of empty space around them. Um, it has been a very necessary component then in them starting to really turn around and look what have they been running from? What about the love you were offering was so triggering to this person? Um, it is bringing up a lot of kind of unhealed shadows within them, um, residue from past romantic connections, um, where they may have really equated um, love with a factor of control um, or love and loss that caused them to, you know, kind of sabotage this connection or push things away before they themselves can be rejected. Um, just any number number of things that have really surfaced for this person. This is the idea of going their own way, going within that deep kind of integral shadow work that is needing to be addressed for them. This can also talk about a lot of other kind of tower moments, things that have been triggered um, in their external circumstances where, you know, based on the nature of a lot of endings, a lot of things that have come crumbling down, a lot of conclusions, they have no other way to go but then deeply within and kind of rebuild, um, solidify a foundation that they have within themselves, a, a belief system, a way that they've been living their life. This is somebody who is kind of, um, they're under construction now at this point in time, so Somebody who's starting to do that work. Um, it may just be at that very introductory stage of at least acknowledging for the first time that uh, perhaps everyone else is not to blame, but that they must take some personal responsibility for the circumstances they have cultivated for themselves and that they find themselves in. But it's an important, crucial first step toward the potential of reconciliation between you in the future and also an important first step on kind of the next evolution of their soul's purpose in this incarnation almost the purpose as well or one of the purposes for the two of you meeting deeply triggering one another bringing up a lot of these shadows um, kind of instigating this this reactionary energy within them this kind of instinct to run um, that now they have found themselves almost at a distance in many ways in their life from wish fulfillment um, from a safe space from where they you know have felt very seen and very accepted and very vulnerable um, and something has really shifted and changed for them to where you know they're they're again having to really look in the mirror forced to go within forced to really evaluate um, and to become very self aware about their motivations and tendencies, wounds and inclinations that they have, maybe even things templated within them, fears imprinted upon them from their upbringing or people around them, and somebody who's really starting to question and decipher and sift through all of that, what resonates with them and what is just um, kind of the result of, of things that they've been through or what they've kind of picked up or gleaned from other people. They also say, I will make things right between us one day. So this is an extension of that other energy, going within, rebuilding a foundation within themselves, building from the ground up, somebody who feels distance is necessary at this point in time. Um, they're starting to come to this awareness that if they had projected onto you as being the problem, that really a lot of this blame lies with them. Um, but it almost feels that they are holding them themselves back or they're becoming very aware that changes need to occur within them before they have something measurable, something of value to present you with, to to return with, that to return at this point in time or to initiate something between the two of you um, would almost just be a recipe for disaster. Um, they're, they're recognizing maybe literally in terms of how they are able to see, see some kind of glow up 
things you post on social media, um, you know, the ways in which you've moved on in your life, that you're cultivating abundance for yourself, um, or even just what they're able to perceive energetically. They sense a shift. They sense a difference within you. And it's really that motivation for them to make some necessary changes within themselves as well, both for their own well-being, um, to kind of evolve to the next stage of their journey for this incarnation, and also to open up the potential horizon to correct this situation, to make amends someday, um, to potentially return to your life as um, kind of a productive influence, an energy which uplifts as opposed to the vibration of sort of stress and uncertainty that may have been um, kind of a theme between you in the past or in the recent past. They also say, I still remember the good times we shared. So a lot of nostalgia, thinking back on you, missing that kind of genesis of the connection, that first kind of initial spark between the two of you before things became so con so complicated. Um, it feels that kind of these thoughts of, um, of the beginning of kind of those early stages between the two of you, it ties in with this idea of kind of soul searching, trying to figure out where things went wrong, why things got so complicated, retracing their steps, going back to the start, um, wanting to rebuild something um, within this situation potentially in the future, but also this feels like somebody who's now kind of on this leg of their personal journey of understanding something needs to be kind of um, a makeover within themselves. Something needs to be renovated within themselves. Something needs to be shifted or altered within themselves um, at this point in their life in order to kind of break the pattern, break the habit, break the cycle of, you know, maybe the same series of um, situations that show up in different ways for them, being deeply triggered by intimacy and self-sabotaging, running or, you know, extinguishing the potential to be very close with people, to be very vulnerable with people, to be very authentic with people. Um, this is someone who's starting to really evaluate and recognize the nature of the masks that they have been wearing. And they also say, I speak to you through music. So they could be listening to songs that the two of you had shared together in the past, um, you know, trying to kind of escape maybe even some of this heaviness, a lot of this darkness that they are being confronted with within themselves and within their life, um, kind of just putting on the headphones and, and uh, muting out the world. A lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of alone time, um, that hermit mode energy that this person is really um, kind of leaning into or, or being guided into at this point in time. Um, they may be getting a lot of vibrational healing as well through music listening to, um, you know, relaxation or meditation, um, you know, playlists or um, compositions, listening to some binaural beats as well, things that they may be very unconsciously kind of drawn to that are almost providing this, this healing and this cracking open at a cellular level, at an energetic level, um, to allow some of this kind of pressure and this, this darkness and distortion that they hold within them, to allow that to be unleashed and released and tapped into, to dressed um, that may have previously just been kind of stuffed down or compartmentalized um, and they're needing to really work their way into that. Um, a lot of that work, it doesn't feel for this person and, and even just for people in, in general, a lot of it, you can only go so deep with very conscious intention. A lot of that is, it's part of the process is surrender and allowing and, and grace and um, almost divine intervention a lot of times. And so something that their intuition might be leading them toward is again the healing power of music, this this vibrational kind of realignment, realigning of the chakras, um, or again just kind of songs or, or vibrations that are, are leading them down this trail of different types of emotions, um, emotions of joy, emotions of sorrow and regret and longing. These are all very necessary things that they're needing to tap on these nerves within themselves to more fully explore the components of that. How have they contributed to these vibrations? How have they run from these vibrations and experiences in their life um, to gain kind of a greater understanding and awareness of their own patterns and habits? They also say you light my fire. So the love they have for you, the feelings they have for you still burn very brightly within them. In the silence, in the separation, you are never far from their mind. They still feel you. They feel very motivated by you. Work that you have done, efforts that you have put in to, to really take back your power from this situation um, and maybe heal and grow from other circumstances in your life, other difficulties that you are transcending, ways in which you are really moving forward despite the urge to um, you know, continue to hold on to the past, to continue 
continue to hold on to hope, to continue to hold on to the memories. You are nevertheless pressing forward. Um, and this person is either, again, literally witnessing this and it is an inspiration to them or they are vibrationally perceiving this and it is kind of it's been this cue or this signal to them that the time is now for them to begin this kind of journey this journey within this journey through their own darkness in order to discover and become that light that self-sustaining light within themselves as well and they also say your touch is magic so again, thinking back on kind of the genesis of this connection, the electricity, sparks that may have been um, felt very mutually between the two of you when you first kissed, when you first held hands, when you first, you know, had that eye contact um, and the intensity of that kind of this idea of the fire and the magic, um, you know, this very kind of uh, intense element between the two of you energetically that may have been so alluring, so so delicious for this person, and yet at the same time deeply triggering of these wounds within themselves, um, a fear of, of losing this very magical connection, which kind of motivated them um, to take steps, to take matters into their own hands, to um, kind of hasten what they in perceived as that inevitable conclusion, um, creating those boundaries, creating those um, kind of impact penetrable barriers, those kind of, that energy of ghosting or blocking or, um, you know, just doing things to self-sabotage uh, because based on that kind of shadowy energy, this sort of feeling of lack, almost a feeling of not being worthy or deserving of such a, such a magical connection with another human being, um, it just it sort of reinforced and was almost that um, distortion or shadow within themselves playing puppet master to this person. Um, better to just end things before they could be left high and dry kind of energy. And all of that is is being evaluated. It is being looked at from fresh eyes. Um, you know, this feeling of longing, this feeling of nostalgia, understanding that they had that. They had that in their in their midst. They had that within their grasp. Uh, they had that in their presence, and they had taken steps or taken measures to to thwart that, um, to push that away, to run from that, to create distance from that. Um, and so, somebody who's kind of in this process now of of sort of deciphering all of that. What's the motivation for that? What is the underlying factors? What does all this mean? Where, where was this stemming from? And how can this be course corrected? Um, starting internally within to kind of rebuild a foundation, learn some new tools or coping mechanisms to become that kind of self-sustaining fire, that magic filling their own cup, the yin to their own yang, becoming their own forever person in order to be able to offer that um, in a reciprocal and healthy way to another or to you in the future in this connection. They also say, I hope you still love me. So more of that energy of kind of looking back on the past with some regret at how unfairly they treated you. They may have left you with a lot of questions. They could have just cut off contact very abruptly. Um, things were going very well between the two of you and then they just put the brakes on in the situation. Um, they're understanding how unfair that was, how, how much confusion that that led to. Um, and there's some self-forgiveness work that is necessary here, understanding that the best apology is, is in changed behavior. Um, and so there's hope that on the other side of this kind of internal process, um, digging down through the shadows and kind of excavating that light within, um, that it will it will kind of create a new horizon, a new potential between the two of you where in the future, um, the story as it is currently, the ending can almost be rewritten between you. Um, that, you know, a new chapter can begin. There's a sense of not wanting to leave things as they are, but almost in the very immediate sort of sense, there's this understanding that there's work that needs to be done within them in order to really kind of pivot this situation into the potential of a different outcome in the future. They also say, I feel such a strong connection with you. So this ties in with that idea of magic and this fire within them. Um, they still feel you. They feel you energetically. Um, they sense your glow up. They sense your um, kind of stepping into your personal power, using your voice, the healing that you have been doing on yourself in regards to this situation or other situations in your life. It has really had a ripple effect out into this person. It has been that kind of unconscious or energetic cue to them 
that the time is now to really start to do that deep dive, that digging um, within their subconscious that they have avoided for quite some time. Um, they almost feel that you are, again, this energetic kind of inspiration to them. Um, if they're able to kind of see you, if you're posting this stuff on social media um, or they're aware of this, they're hearing about you through the grapevine, um, you know, maybe even seeing you out and about. Maybe this is somebody, you know, you share a work connection with. They are able to literally physically see you and they're recognizing something about you has changed. There's a lightness about you, something, some way in which you've released expectations or released your previous approach to this situation. Situation in this person, um, the shift that has happened, um, it has had a profound effect upon them, a very positive effect upon them. It's a very necessary um, effect upon them in order to, again, start to go within, do that work on themselves um, to be able to kind of create some balance to correct some distortions that are within them um, in order to be able to bring something forward in the future um, to you and in terms of this connection that is of meaning and value. And they also say, I'm doing the best I can given the circumstances. So they may feel very overwhelmed by the amount of uh, kind of shadow work that they have to do. A lot of what is surfacing for them, um, things that they haven't dealt with in a long time, things they thought they had gotten over that they are now starting to understand um, have really kind of interfered in this situation. This can be instances from childhood. This can talk about um, young love, this can talk about early situations of heartbreak, um, that this sort of expectation or the way that this has kind of jaded this person, um, it's a hard pill to swallow that they've really stood in their own way, that um, kind of this wish fulfillment, this this blessing of connection with another um, was right there. It was, it was right you know, right at their fingertips. It was available to them. They had touched upon this. They had experienced that magic and that that fire, that, that being really activated and ignited within them. Um, and then they chose to move away from this or to try to extinguish this or to sabotage it in some way. Um, so it's some heaviness, some work on self-forgiveness that is necessary. Um, they're navigating through all of this as best as they can at a pace that they are able to, trying to kind of sustain, um, you know, their material stability, their other responsibilities Abilities in the real world um, while also carving out time or allowing for these feelings to kind of surface, um, this kind of integration within themselves, this shadow work that needs to be done, uh, kind of a balancing act at this point in time to where, again, this idea of communication, it feels like they have too much on their plate at this point, um, but it's a, it's a very necessary stage that they are entering into to creating these um, kind of long overdue changes within themselves, which opens up the possibility of change in this circumstance between the two of you, either in the form of some kind of um, closure and vindication in the future, or to be able to turn the page in terms of a potential reconciliation, starting over, building fresh um, as a potential uh, sort of future possibility for you as well. So I'm going to get some initials. This can be first, middle, or last name of you, or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Got K, L, Y, P, E, A, D, I, N, and X. So those are your messages, group two. I hope they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer pre-recorded video readings. I've just brought back written readings, and I also offer channeled love letters if you're interested in any of those. Um, the turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers in my Etsy shop as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
my group three. He chose the clear quartz. So I'm going to be getting three cards from three different decks. And let's see, what does your person want you to know from their higher self? Okay, and they say, I'm working towards a better future. So they may be in the process right now of closing out some cycles and habits within themselves, breaking some um, toxic patterns, sort of moving away or ending one-sided relationships, very karmic situations, um, focusing on their healing, on their health, on their well-being. Um, you know, maybe kind of moving away from certain friendships that were very draining, certain patterns and habits within themselves that were very depleting, very diminishing. Somebody who is starting to take their well-being more seriously, plan for the future, become more serious about, um, you know, school. Maybe somebody or some people or somebody specifically, this might be for just one person, um, someone's decided to go back to school, um, maybe go to school for the first time to um, kind of improve their, their earning capacity, their, um, their skill set um, to get that degree, finish working toward that degree. Um, become very serious about a career path for themselves. Um, somebody who's starting to, you know, really kind of do that deep introspective work, um, learning new skills and abilities as far as communication is concerned, um, taking kind of a wider perspective on sort of the environment they grew up in as a child and how that has really affected their ability to show up in connections, um, their idea of what love and partnership should look like. Um, someone who's, who's kind of taking the blinders off as far as the deep impact that that has made upon them and the choices they have decided for themselves um, in their life in general and even as far as this connection goes. This feels like someone who is very cognizant of the fact that uh, something about this situation was deeply triggering to them. They may have chosen to kind of recoil from you or, or kind of distance themselves, close off communication, block communication as a defense mechanism for not wanting to really enter into that realm of deep intimacy, some core wounds and shadows within them that were disturbed by the intensity of the love, the very healing energy um, that exists and is exchanged and that grows between the two of you very unconsciously. Um, all of this has really come to this person's awareness and it feels that they are working to do some of that healing within themselves, to educate themselves about their own tendencies, about patterns and habits, maybe even coming into, you know, knowing the idea of an avoidant attachment style. Um, and all of this kind of um, looking back, looking at other situations, other circumstances, their patterns, their tendencies in romance and in other types of relationships and taking steps to really break those patterns, break those habits, step out of their comfort zone in some way um, and, and try things that they hadn't tried before. Try a new approach, um, seeking different results in the long term by um, creating different actions in the here and now. They also say, I'm trying to think of what I want to say to you. So a desire to reach out, a desire to maybe share with you some good news that they have, some changes that they have made, um, some milestones or goals that they are working toward or that they have reached for themselves. Um, there's this energy of, of almost celebration, a feeling of accomplishment that you'd be very proud of them for certain steps that have been taken. Maybe this is very toxic connections. This could have been... Um, 
you know, an overbearing parent, for example, um, kind of one of those helicopter parents that was really trying to dictate terms in this person's adult life even, that they have set up some healthy boundaries with this individual. They have really taken their power back. They are exploring what resonates for them, um, you know, creating kind of a life outside of that sort of codependent uh, relationship. Or this can relate to groups of friends, people they were hanging around with, things that they were participating in. Um, you know, maybe even if substance abuse was an issue for some of you, that this person has started to get help. They have started to go to meetings. They have gotten counseling. They have gotten sober. They have dried out. Maybe even some people have had to go to rehab. Um, they've taken steps. They have kind of um, cut some of these things off, cut these things out of their life. And there's this desire to share that with you, the progress or the changes that they have made. Maybe things that you had suggested to them in the past that they had um, just kind of laughed off or, or gotten very defensive about, gotten very triggered about, that they have now seen these things with fresh eyes and have taken steps to, to make those changes and alterations and that it has been a very positive experience for them. Um, and again, there's there it feels like some marked changes that have happened or they've made some substantial progress um, towards some kind of elevation or evolution in their life in general. And there is this desire to um, almost try again or to maybe start off as friends, um, kind of wanting you to be by their side on this very exciting next step of their journey. They also say the thought of you still does things to me. So they may be thinking back on um, words that you said, advice that you had given, recommendations, feedback. Um, and again, if they had sort of laughed that off or dismissed it, they're taking these things um, to heart now. They're, they're seeing the wisdom in that. Um, you're very much a motivating presence for this person, even from afar. They think back on the energy that you hold, this optimism, um, you know, your worldview, how you live in your authenticity, in your truth. Maybe this was something that wasn't even necessarily the case when they were last dealing with you, but you've gone through some kind of glow up. You've taken your power back. You've been that inspiration. The two of you may be almost on these parallel paths or parallel journeys of closing out some cycles for yourself, making better choices, making healthier choices, putting your own kind of well-being first and foremost. Um, filling your own cup rather than overgiving and depleting yourself, listening to your heart and um, to your own kind of mind, that your own truth that resonates for you as opposed to, you know, maybe what others expect of you or, um, you know, taking the opinions of others a little less, a little less to heart, keeping a little more, um, you know, sort of closed within, kind of keeping your own counsel, any of these things or, or a combination of all of these things. Uh, this person has really sensed that. They've sensed that energetically. It feels like the two of you are almost holding hands, um, walking along this path energetically, uh, despite the way that your physical 3D paths may have diverged. It's different routes to that same kind of goal of self-awareness and autonomy and standing in one's own power. They also say, I love you beyond bounds. So the healing work. Um, the work of rebuilding their life, of becoming very honest, stepping into that authenticity within them, it has unleashed a greater understanding of the nature of their feelings for you um, that defy words, it defies explanation, it is without bounds. And despite whatever has happened, how your roads have diverged from one another, how you've grown, um, how you've evolved, there is still this, this constant between the two of you that maybe at the, in the past, this person may have perceived it or it did have some elements of almost toxicity to it, a little bit of codependency or neediness, um, but that since time has passed, since the two of you have each individually really cultivated some inner strength for yourself, made some changes, um, detached from expectations, directed your focus inward and upon other things than this connection. And yet still this flame that they have for you, it has not fully been extinguished. They are able to really see and perceive the ways in which they had misinterpreted or misconstrued or were approaching um, the energy exchange between the two of you, or the, the soul dynamic, the bond that exists. They were approaching it or, or 
viewing it through the lens of distortion. And as they've created more of this healthy perspective, um, they've cleansed a lot of these things. They're in that process of kind of um, reformatting themselves. They are seeing this connection from, with fresh eyes. They're seeing it from a different angle where they may have felt very pressured or um, like a lot of expectations or demands upon them in this situation. They are recognizing um, energetically that this connection is one which uplifts the two of you motivating one another, um, helping one another, feeding one another um, from afar. And this idea of really wanting to kind of bring that out from that sort of spiritual realm, from that energetic realm, wanting to bring this out into a 3D sense to, um, you know, reinitiate something together. Maybe again, starting fresh, starting, you know, from, from ground zero, starting as friends first, um, reintroducing each other to one another, becoming reacquainted because of this new vibration that, and kind of maybe even a new life, maybe dramatic changes in your material worlds, um, your priorities, your focus, the life you've constructed for yourselves, um, that it's almost, you know, it's so familiar, but almost like two strangers who are meeting again for the first time. And there's, there's a desire now where in the past there may have been a little bit of fear or avoidance in that capacity. They also say, I miss your playful sense of humor. So they're thinking back on the good times that you shared, um, recognizing a gentleness about you, um, a very genuine quality about you that again, because of the distortion they were operating in before, it's almost like they were just looking for the worst. They were looking for those red flags. They were looking for the excuses, um, a sense almost of trying to deny their feelings for you in the past as too good to be true, looking for that catch. And when they weren't able to find it, they themselves generated kind of the toppling of this situation um, but they've they've crossed a threshold in some way there's been a turning point um, where they have taken some personal responsibility taken some accountability the changes that they have made um, unrelated to this connection have in a sense shifted something energetically within them to where they are now able to revisit this and experience um, this perpetual bond between the two of you in a more light energy a light-hearted energy there's a desire to kind of start again, to rebuild um, fresh in this situation, um, to kind of move out of any sort of lingering disappointment or heaviness, the heaviness of silence and distance between the two of you, and to step into this, you know, this very healed energy, this idea of laughter being, um, you know, this very beautiful medicine that can be exchanged between two people, um, that kind of uplifted vibration, laughter having the ability to clear even the the most dense and, and difficult circumstances, um, you know, to really shift the vibration of a whole room. Um, and it, this feels like kind of a long-term plan for this person is to, you know, continue on this work that they have done within themselves, um, continue to think of kind of how to break that ice, how to reach out, how to make that first contact, a desire to alleviate um, some of the heaviness or the uncertainty or um, kind of this cloak of silence that has been draped over this situation. They also say, I'm finding my way back to you. So this again is talking about that idea of sort of the, the journey within, the changes they have made in themselves and in their life independent of this connection has really cleared something up for them, um, where they are able to perceive and feel and understand the nature of this connection with fresh eyes. Um, they're not so triggered. They are not feeling so burdened by it. It's this desire to move back towards you, um, to almost try again, start again, start fresh, but with the wisdom of experience um, from that vibration of things having changed within them and changed within their life. Um, and it ties in also with that idea of that they are thinking of what they want to say to you. This is not a passive energy. This is a very action-oriented state that this person is in right now. And it applies to many areas of their life, this connection included. So for some of you, you may possibly hear from this person in the very near future. This doesn't feel like someone who will be very content to just sit on the sidelines. There's an acceleration that is happening in their life, a lot of changes that are taking place. This is someone who's taking back their power. They're stepping into that confidence center. They are making change for themselves. They are actively becoming that change they wish to see in the world. Um, and as kind of more of that clarity comes to them energetically and they are able to really see and decipher this connection, the potential that existed between you in the past and what 
um, persists, what perpetuates even to this day, no matter how much time has gone by or what has happened in the past, um, that they are they're gaining more clarity about their feelings for you. And this doesn't feel like somebody who will be very content to just sort of sit with that, to hold that, to remain silent with that. And they also say, I am in a storm of emotions right now. So a lot of upheaval, a lot of change, a lot of tower moments, um, good and bad, you know, really maybe putting their foot down with some people, um, seeing people's true colors, unmasking individuals um, that may have had very kind of one-sided motivations, um, a lot of one-sided connections or a lot of codependency, having to really lay down their boundaries, lay down their limits, um, put up some barriers against people and facing a lot of protest, both from these people and also sort of fighting this internal instinct within them that has been so accustomed to this way of sort of dealing with emotions, maybe on an unhealthy level. Um, and so it feels like a very arduous process. Um, there's a lot of traction that has been gained. There's a lot of progress that has been made, but this is not without struggle. Um, a lot of what is happening is it's this deep emotional shadow work, coming to terms with things, facing some things, facing how, you know, maybe for a lot of them, they had really kind of deferred their choices onto other people, living in accordance to how other people expected them to live. That could have even applied to the nature of what took place in this situation, ways in which you didn't fit that mold or that kind of perception of the type of person they should be with, the nature of connection, the depth and intensity of emotion that exists between two people that is called love. Um, all of this being a very kind of, it's a joy to be able to discover the truth, but then there's also this heaviness as well, this energy of regret at having overlooked this, taken this for granted, um, you know, kind of that idea of still thinking of what they want to say, finding their way back to you, still in this process of creating that balance within themselves, of, of really gleaning the wisdom from these experiences, the mistakes and the choices that were made in the past, so that different actions from a more mindful place, um, a more genuine place can be kind of created in the future. They also say, I've isolated all my life. Um, so this can definitely reinforce the idea of, um, you know, blocks being put up, um, you know, isolating themselves from very one-sided connections, very toxic connections in their life. Um, an avoidant attachment style may have been their coping mechanism that they have really come to terms with. They have started to understand this about themselves and this tendency and how it has really kept them at a distance um, from wish fulfillment in many different ways. How they may have, um, you know, kind of sabotaged opportunities for themselves also in many different ways. Um, these things all being hard pills to swallow, but they're working their way through that. This can also tie into um, kind of this energy of, of them wanting you to know it's not your fault that they pulled away, maybe so abruptly, you know, with, with no notice, just kind of ghosting you, blocking you. Um, you know, things were going very well, and then all of a sudden this person went ice cold. Um, all of this is really, it's a tendency, it's a shadow within them. Um, when they neared this proximity to the warmth of love, to love without bounds, love that, um, you know, bordered on being very unconditional, very healthy, very reciprocal, that that's very unlike what they had come to, to know and believe love should be like, love should feel like. And it is almost this fear of otherness that in the past had caused them to push away the very force or experience of love that could have been very healing and healthy for them. It's a process of working themselves out of that. Um, it's a process of kind of coming out of that shell, stepping out of that comfort zone, um, creating new patterns of action in order to generate new results, new experiences and new feelings for themselves. And they also say, I love how you laugh at my jokes. So another reference to humor there. Um, so you guys may have had some kind of inside jokes. They're missing the playful banter between the two of you, this light energy uh, before everything became so complicated and these triggers occurred um, and you know, things got so difficult or this person got spooked and, and just kind of ran from this connection, put up their walls or sort of withdrew from the, the intensity and the intimacy that was being created between the two of you. This again reinforces the idea that they are in this process of um, kind of strengthening themselves, stepping more into that place of confidence, continuing to kind of put one foot in front of the other and um, 
create a different pattern for themselves, breaking out of some patterns, um, closing out of things that have been very depleting or draining um, or very one-sided for them. Um, it's this energy of kind of reciprocity, this give and take, the exchange of humor, the exchange of lightness between the two of you. They may also be finding it um, to be very ironic, kind of where you where you find yourselves at this point in time, um, coming into that awareness um, almost with a sad smile that the very medicine of love um, that they have been seeking, that they ran from that, it was presented to them um, and they chose to kind of push it away or move in another direction. And it feels that almost um, humor is kind of their... Um, it's something they can lean on at this point in time. There may be such heaviness, you know, this storm of emotions that all they can just try to do is is laugh, um, you know, focus on the positives, focus on the potential at this point in time, um, you know, because it keeps them from crying. It keeps them from being very overwhelmed. They're trying to be optimistic. They're trying to... Um, you know, keep perspective, keep hope on a bright future, on the potential of, um, you know, a fresh start between you, on uh, the idea, this this hope and this promise that on the other side of these difficult decisions to close out um, certain tendencies within themselves, um, to kind of distance themselves or uh, sort of move away from other kinds of connections and relationships that had been, you know, very toxic and, and very draining that, you know, bringing down kind of the walls around a certain lifestyle that they were living, um, you know, or things that they were hiding about their true nature, their true desires, um, a direction that they wanted to kind of build for themselves, changes in, in lifestyle, changes in job, changes in location that they are living, just all of these things and this heaviness, they're, they're needing to kind of, um, you know, lean on on humor and on um, kind of that that idea of laughter that on the other side of all of this kind of burdensome and arduous work, this working toward that better future, um, that the rewards will come. It feels that they're starting to trickle in, but there's still so much. It's um, you know maybe just it's bringing them very close to to kind of this center point within themselves to be very grateful in the moment. Um, lots of opportunities to look for gratitude. You know, even just in in things that make them laugh, um, kind of creating this balance for themselves between the heavy lifting, the hard work, um, you know, and maybe taking time to watch a lot of comedy movies or, um, you know, just trying to, thinking back on memories of, that the two of you have shared um, that were good times and, and that being a very, very much a source of healing and, and again, a counterweight to kind of this heaviness and, and a lot of endings and conclusions and sort of upheaval that is happening for them. Um, also reinforcing that idea of a desire to kind of alleviate the heaviness and the burden some energy between the two of you and restore this connection in time to more of a light vibration where there's flow where you know people are enjoying one another's company they're enjoying one another's presence this person wants to return to you in a lighter vibration um, having unleashed and and sort of um alleviated from themselves a lot of this heaviness a lot of these patterns and this toxicity wanting to return to you as a positive presence an uplifting presence um, so that the next chapter the fresh start um, the new future between the two of you can be one that starts out on a very positive note um, one that has the ability to really uplift the two of you um, and heal some of the difficulties and disappointments you face together by creating new memories happy memories good times together so I'm going to get some initials, and this can be first, middle, or last name of you or this person. I can spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Got C, R, G, Y, S, H. Q, K, P, and W. So those are your messages, group three. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. 
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer pre-recorded video readings. I've just brought back written readings, and I also offer channeled love letters. Um, turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.